Why is it that even with a shared vision and a foundation of mutual respect, your new CEO may still be destined for failure or decline? There's always a loss when the founder steps down. It doesn't mean it isn't worth it, but pretending that it didn't happen is unwise. The founder and the business at this point are almost inseparable. For the founder, this can mean some personal soul searching after the honeymoon period wears off. For the company, it can feel like losing a parent. There's a strangeness to this transition. And while much of it is temporary, the truth is there won't ever be another founder leading the company forward. As much as I didn't want this to be true when I took over as CEO, I can tell you that it was. And the sooner I recognized it and accepted it, the sooner we could talk about it as a team, process it, and even benefit from it. But here's the point I want to make now. As the founder, you need to find someone who is more skilled than you. Otherwise, there's just simply no point. Handing off the company to someone you are hoping can swing it is setting them up from, from day one to fail. They're already stepping into big shoes, and that could be one too many challenges for them to face. Now, you may be sitting there thinking, hey, this seems so obvious, but it's a whole different story in the real world. Usually, there is some heir apparent inside the company. It can be a literal heir, or it can be a loyal number two who's been there since the very beginning. It can happen, but it's rare for a loyal number two to be your exceptional number one executive, leaving you with a very tough decision. Do you promote the number two into a role that's too big for them? Or do you look over all that loyalty and hard work and choose someone else? Either way, it's tough. But I can tell you this, it is never honoring to put someone in a role in which you know they cannot succeed. Leading a company from the top is a very big job. And being there from the beginning does not automatically mean you've got what it takes to lead from the number one spot. While we've spent the last three videos talking about how to make a relationship with a professional CEO work, you should never start the process. You should never hire a professional CEO to rescue the company. That's a recipe for a bad choice, a lousy process, a vision gap, and a catastrophic lack of trust. If you're finding yourself in need of rescue, then there's something else going on that needs to be addressed before you can move forward. And here's the great news. If you take the time to address the underlying issue or issues, you may find you don't need to hire a CEO at all. Check out the next video to learn more.